Welcome to Build Your Maverick Business, the podcast for underdog, outlier, and renegade entrepreneurs. Brought to you by Strange Creative Studio. If you dream of going off on your own and launching your rebel empire, but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We'll teach you how to use mindset, branding, and practical advice to build a killer business and transform your world. And now, here's your host, founder of Strange, Alex Pitt. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Well, it's morning where I am. I have had just the one coffee today. So, yeah, let's hope I don't bounce off the walls. I just want to say, before I get into this week's episode, a massive, massive shout out to all of the Strange team. I must admit, I had one of those days yesterday where I got really, really overwhelmed and just like freaked myself out. I was like, oh, there's so much happening. Like we're really, really lucky at the moment that we're working with so many lovely clients and they're just great. And I'm having a really nice time. But yesterday I did just have a moment of, oh, there's so much happening. And all of the Strange team are just amazing. And yeah, a few projects over the last few weeks, they've just rallied and they've made me feel so much better. And they've done such great work. And do you know what? They just make me look good. So you guys are incredible. You know who you are. Uh, Yeah, I think I need to take everyone out for a drink, basically. But unfortunately, everyone lives in different parts of the world. So yeah, maybe we'll have a virtual drink. We'll see. Anyway, massive shout out to the Strange crew. You guys are amazing. Now this week, I I will get to the title of this episode in a little while because I did make myself chuckle with this. Can't take credit for it, but I will come back to that. So Joe knows, Joe, my partner in life and in business, is a, <laughs> God, that sounded so naff. He knows when I'm super stressed out because there's a few signs. One of them is I tend to like anxious clean, like stress clean the flat. So I will find something to do, which is like, you know, I'll do some washing up, I'll clean the bathroom, I'll be like going out of my mind with my, my little sponge, just like, Ehh. It's probably quite frightening to look at, if I'm honest. But hey, the flat's very clean. So I've also heard the term, like, rather than stress cleaning, I've heard the term procrastinating thrown about. right? And I really like that because the reality is that's why I do it. It's because I need to take my mind off the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. So procrastinating, cleaning, when you find something else to do that feels productive so you can avoid what you're actually supposed to be doing. So I've said this before, I'm not very good at sitting still. So when I'm feeling any kind of avoidance coming up for the work that I'm doing, I procrastinate. clean. Like me and my mum basically treat the various fragrances of Sephora like football cards. <laughs> I actually follow the hashtag cleaning tips on Instagram. It's, it's like a weird hobby of mine. So when I'm feeling really frustrated or I have a creative block, I will look at a pile of ironing with like hunger in my eyes. <laughs> Or when I have a deadline looming and I'm feeling that like entrapment of you must keep your bum in that seat, I'll just like notice a little layer of dust on the bookshelf and I'm like, oh, mama, it's, it's a problem, right? I'm just looking for ways to avoid the thing that I need to do by displacing it with another activity that I see as productive. Now, that's my vice. That is, that's my cross to bear. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. What I want to talk to you about today is actually not something that I think that I'm guilty of, but I do see it happen all of the time to other founders, to other people who want to start their business. And I can't help but think how incredibly crippling this is. Now that thing I have decided (laughs) is called procrastinate planning. I'm going to work on the name. I know it's not catchy. (laughs) I'm sure, I'm sure there's a better term for what I'm talking about, right? Bear with, like I say, I've only had the one coffee today. So (laughs) procrastinate planning, this ridiculous term that I have just made up, be right back, calling my lawyer to copyright that. Procrastinate planning is the act of extensive long-term planning and pre-thinking on an idea without taking any action. Okay, I'm going to say that again, (laughs) louder for the people in the back. Procrastinate planning is the act of extensive long-term planning and pre-thinking on an idea without taking any action. Right, what I mean by that, I speak to a lot of people who want to start businesses. They have an idea, they love the thought of running a business, who wouldn't? It is the best thing in the whole world. 
and they want to tell me about it. Like they're fired up. They're like, oh, I've got this great idea. I want to do this thing. I'm so excited. And I'm like, yeah, sick, man. What are you up to? When does it launch? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm still working on my business plan. Still working out the logistics. You know, I've got a few spreadsheets on the go. I've got some Google Docs going. Yeah, still in the planning stages. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. Like, yeah, okay, things don't happen overnight. So you do need to do a bit of thinking about it before you quit your day job, whatever. So I think, okay, cool. So then I catch up with them six months later. And I'm like, how's the business? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much the same, you know. Made a bit of progress, you know. Tweaked the business plan a bit. Worked away on the Excel sheet. (laughs) 12 months later, two years later, nothing's happened, right? The problem is, and I obviously, like I say, this isn't something that I necessarily think that I do, but I can see the patterns in things that I do elsewhere in my life, right? Like saying that I'm procrastinating cleaning because I don't want to sit down and do the thing. I freak myself out and I don't want to get on with it because there's some level of like underlying fear. And what I see with people who do this procrastinate planning is they tend to not get very far because they're so unwilling to take action. And taking action is the thing that you need to do. Like you need to do so much stuff to get anywhere. So the title of this podcast episode is actually taken from a phenomenal book that I recommend to anyone about launching a new business. It's called The Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki. So don't worry, be crappy. It is actually a title of the chapter in the book. Right, I'm not exactly a wordsmith. I came up with procrastinate planning. So yeah, not can't take credit for that. So in this chapter, Kawasaki talks about how you should not be spending a load of time making business plans, starting your branding, thinking about your website, thinking about where your offices are going to be. No. What he says you should do is find a way to create the most basic prototype of your product and get it to market in the simplest way possible, right? Remember the episode about working smart, not hard? Find the easiest way to do it. Now that's called a minimal viable product. And really all it's doing is testing that the thing that you're creating is something that people want. The truth is you can plan until you are blue in the face, right? You can plan for years to create a perfect business, but there's no such thing You don't know what people are going to think about your product or service until they experience it. What you need to do is get what you can in front of the people that you want to sell to, gather feedback and then keep tweaking it. Because this isn't like a one and done thing, right? You never launch a product and it's perfect and everybody loves it. And then you just ride off into the sunset with your millions of pounds. I can tell you from experience, loves, that's not how it goes. Everything is a marathon. It's putting things out, testing it, tweaking it, putting it out, test it, tweak it. Say, for example, right? Now I'm talking really small here. You want to start a business selling cupcakes. Let's say you have a day job, you work in a corporate company, you fucking hate it. And all you really want to do is start a bakery. So you want to you want to make cakes, you want to make cupcakes. So a procrastinate planner would spend thousands of pounds and countless hours creating this huge launch, you know, finding where their shop's going to be, finding where their their site is, like creating a website, planning what their packaging's going to be like, all of this sort of thing. You can spend a really long time thinking about all of that and planning that. And in the meantime, you can launch it after all of this and fucking crickets, right? <laughs> that can happen. That is a thing that does happen. Now, I will propose to you another way of doing this, right? Say you posted in your local Facebook group, introducing yourself, putting up a picture of yourself and saying, hello, I am Steve, whatever, you know, (laughs) I don't know who this person is, saying, hello, this is who I am. I am planning on starting a business. Would anybody be interested in trying the first batch of my cakes, right? And don't create 10 different versions of your product. Create your best product, your like flagship thing. Create a small batch of that and say, would anyone like to try this? Now, this is actually another technique. If you read Jeff Walker's launch about how people are more invested in products that they help get to market, people like to feel involved in things. So if you say get five, 10 people to try this product, they're going to be more likely to say, I was part of this great thing. I was in this pilot program of trying these cakes and aren't these amazing? 
At which point you can give all of those people a 10% discount code and say, if your friends would like to order from me, give them this and they can have a discount. So then there's two reasons for those people to recommend it to somebody else, right? They were involved in the creation of this product, so they're invested. And also they can offer something like, oh, I've got this discount code. Would you like it? Because people also like to be helpful. Now, all of a sudden, you're starting to create a buzz about this product. You can get feedback. You can ask them for reviews and testimonials. But you're spreading the word without doing all of this pre-work, you know. Say, for example, like you want to create another food business. Like, I don't know if you follow Poppy Cooks on Instagram, but oh my God, the potato queen. Like she can sell you anything because she just puts up loads of videos of her being so passionate about her craft. And so she's created this huge buzz, this huge audience. Look at the body coach. Like I know I'm talking about specifically food businesses, but the way that these people have created not a huge, like the body coach didn't go away and say, okay, well, I'm going to write 10 books, find a gym and, you know, hire 50 staff or whatever. He started by filming ridiculous videos of him lobbing rice across the room into his microwave to show people what he was passionate about and what he was doing in the smallest way. And that created a buzz and that got him to where he is now, right? So if you are this person, if you are Steve, I don't know why it's Steve, who is creating these these cakes, that buzz can build and build and build until, you know, you do start to create that fancy packaging and you are able to do all of this sort of thing because you've built it, started from where you were, started small and built on that, right? So start posting on social media, start getting your name out there. Don't try and be perfect. Just create, share, tweak, create, share, tweak. Now there is another quote in this book that I absolutely love and it's by Reid Hoffman. And that quote is, If you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. Right, I mean, that's powerful stuff. I love that quote. I want to say it again, again louder for the people in the back. If you are not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. You cannot plan the perfect business. You can't predict everything. Start small with what you have. Create, share, tweak. All right, my darlings, that's all for me from this week. I will catch you here next time. Got an idea for a maverick business of your own? Learn how to build a powerful brand that will get people obsessed with our online program, not just a pretty logo. You'll learn a simple step-by-step framework that will kickstart your killer brand and help you find your raving fan base. Find out more today at strangecreativestudio.com.